What's up, everyone? Um, like we said in the main episodes, we, we come in together with new segments. And, you know, we had to bring the sandbar back. And for those of you guys who don't know the sandbar, the sandbar is when we, you know, bring in a guest who is an expert in their field. And, you know, we ask them questions. We um, educate ourselves to help educate you guys. So that's just a, a quick rundown of the sandbar. And um, we have the man himself. You, you, you will know him. The myth, the legend. You know him. Just like I'll, I'll let him introduce himself. I'll let him introduce his businesses. Um, he can leave his contacts. His all his information, all his um, will be in the caption. You can hit him up if you need a trainer. Um, if you just need, he'll 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 tell you. So, without further ado, introduce yourself to the people. Let them know what you do. Let them know what you're here for, and we can get right into it. Pleasure to be here. First of all, my name is Giovanni Kalma. I'm the Owner of Just Lifting Fitness is a home-based fitness company. Started with humble beginnings, and now I've grown over the years. I'm happy to be here. I'm excited about answering the questions that you guys have. And what my business is inspired by is inspired by a place of just wanting to do better. You know, seeing where I was, and aspiring to see and become greater, and wanting to take people on a journey with me. You know, realizing that. We all see ourselves in a particular version and we want to be inspired. And me being someone who I, I like to see myself as one that could be an inspiration to others, I found a niche and a need for, I guess, people who are interested in bettering themselves physically in terms of their health, as well as an appearance. And here we are today. So, he, oh, Mukari talk. I, I don't want to. Oh, um, no. I just want to start off with something good because, you know, in the spirit of squat over, I mean, I personally feel this way. I personally feel this way. Okay. I feel like he's the best pound for pound person at squat in probably the country. Do you agree? That's, you that's, that, that can definitely be debatable. <laughs> that, that's, that can be debated, you know. I wouldn't go right out there and say something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it just depends on how you want to look at, I guess, the avenue of what are you measuring strength and capability and the best in, you know, there because there are people in different ranges Yeah. Of squat toba. You have people who are strictly power lifters like mm -hmm. myself. You have people who are more fitness and calisthenic in terms of what they would go for. Mm -hmm. You have the everyday person who might be good in, in verse in many different areas of working out. So it depends on what you want to look at. Now, it also has a lot to do with the size and the weight of that person as well. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, measuring myself up against someone who was, significantly heavier than i am yeah, their right. their capability would be vastly bigger than mine but pound for pound now though? now if we're talking pound for pound <laughs> i still debate about i'll never i'll never take that <laughs> take that throne it'll have to be a, a fair competition where everyone is able to have that opportunity to go squat for squat in their categories and they have the basis based off how much i weigh on that particular day and how much my percentage is in terms of how much i'm able to lift as compared to my weight okay. and then then we'll be able to say for sure who is the pound for pound because just because someone is lifting a heavy amount of weight does not yeah. does not mean in any shape, form, or caliber that this person is the strongest as it relates to their weight. You know, we can't leave out our ladies. And we can't true. leave out the, those who are older than us or younger yeah, than us. True. Yeah. You know, so. I respect it. I respect it. Because, like, going in, like, I've, I've been watching your, I've been watching the videos that you've been posting for mm -hmm. this month, right? And depth-wise, depth-wise, you're there, right? Yeah. And... A lot of people in their squats, mm -hmm. um, they don't get that deep. And I'll, I'll mm -hmm. even include myself. I'm not a power lift. I'm not a lift. I lift for football. And that's about it. Whatever can help me play better on the football field, that's, mm -hmm. that's what I'm going to do. So my question would probably be, um, what word of advice would you give to those guys who are the casual um, gym goers who want to get a deeper squat mm -hmm. and don't want to... Um, well, who want to get a deeper squat? Because you know, you have people when they're squatting in the gym, and you see it, they're they're not getting parallel. They're getting just um, they're half, the rep. Rep. half rep. Okay, half rep. All right. Well, that that's a loaded question, and to answer it fairly, I have the approach from every angle. Now, the first question I would ask is, what are you squatting? What's the purpose for you and the squatting itself? You know, mm -hmm. what are you squatting for? 
you know now just to give a little feedback as to why i asked the question for instance track and field athletes they squat for a particular reason their reason is all about power mm -hmm. right now being that a track and field athlete squats for power depth is not a heavy concern for them okay you know because their angle is okay how fast can i get all these blocks now that being their focus everything is about up and down up and down up and down being able to get a spring motion you know and a power with the blocks for some like you who is a football player i would definitely can see the the importance of depth because with depth you're able to build bigger and denser muscle tissues which can definitely help you on the field now how do you go about improving your squat depth just like everything else i'll start by saying it's repetition it's mm -hmm. practice it has to be an intentional act of wanting to get lower and also including things tools like your, your camera phone you know being able to measure yourself and see okay i got here today i'm trying to get a little bit lower the next time and you measure it in that, in that fashion also stretching you know we don't mm -hmm. we don't take uh, in high importance yeah, so. and how much stretching holds into lifting and preparing yourself you know most of us like myself i initially started off where i was just basically jumping straight into the gym and sat in the squat or that's why almost I, immediately that's, that's, that's you know what, like that's, that's, that's the mentality i came with <laughs> you know especially when you when you crunch for time you got like an hour and a half yeah, in the gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you really don't have time to spend 20 that's minutes stretching true. you just got to get right into it you yeah. know this is where you kind of you start to find your niche and you realize listen if i only got an hour and a half in the gym i gotta find some quick exercise that could come kind of get me warm almost mm -hmm. instantly mm -hmm. you know and once you find those things that you need you go up to your routine and every time you get in the gym you attack it the same way because you need to be warm that's the first thing because I, i'll just put a this question out there of when you realize that trying to squat just using your body weight and mm -hmm. then squatting again with weights you realize that you almost feel like you could get lower once you add weight to your body yeah. Whereas trying to just do it, just free of, free of hand with no weights on your shoulders, you find it's, it's, it's a challenge, yeah. right? That's because just like anything in life, right? Most times you need tension and you need pressure to push you to be great, your greatest. When you're in environments that don't challenge you, mm -hmm. you kind of just continue to just do the, just, just do the bare minimum. Yeah, just complacency yeah. and you get, you get comfortable. You know, if I, if I were to put weight on your shoulders that's too heavy for you, <laughs> you, would, you would just drop, <laughs> right? The same, the same yeah. way when it comes to squats. So leaving point with this is just consistency mm -hmm. and asking advice just like with anything okay all right um i also want to ask this question because i know you said that you know people come to your gym they want to work on their physique mm -hmm. their physical attributes mm -hmm. but the thing is with gym owners like yourself mm -hmm. you also got to tap into the mental Bingo. you all to be psychologists ah. in a way almost <laughs> <laughs> that's how it feels like y'all have to be y'all have to dip into almost every profession to make sure they get to where they need to be what do you see so, some good questions right? yeah <laughs> so basically i try to figure out like because they know you made it to a certain level mm -hmm. they trying to get there as well how do you translate that to them when it's like they may not exactly know how to get there or they just feel like they're incapable how do mm -hmm. you pull that out of them mentally well there are two things i do initially with new clients one of them being one of, one of them being that i break dice immediately right so i start off by being vulnerable with them first so that they see that there's an air of vulnerability that you can be with me right so most people they want to know okay if even if they don't ask i let them know what's my story my story started from being in college and the pressures of anyone who's been to college they know the pressures of trying to finish trying to graduate balancing this would probably be a part-time job or any any other activity or clubs that you're involved in and just realizing that just the the stuff with the weight on your shoulders is just too much yeah. you know i have a track and field background i've been on a few national teams so i know what it is to be in some level of shape but never is it really been translated to being in a gym atmosphere mm -hmm. you know but i needed an outlet a place where i could kind of be to myself away from you know other pressures and, and things of the real routine so i always let people know about where i started and how and what was my driving force to help me to kind of do it you know that'll be the first thing I, I would pose to them the second thing i ask them what's your why you know, and anything that you would do in life, you need to have a why as to why. It explains why you're doing it. If you don't have a why, it won't be something that you're able to maintain. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've even turned clients away who didn't have a why. Or it seemed as though it was almost a fad. Yeah. And, and the reason for this is not that I, I want to kind of close people off from fitness itself. It's just that I want you to understand and have a discipline that, hey, when you start this, you're not going to be someone who's here for one month and then go on for the next. because. No. The idea behind just lifting in my brand is that just lifting itself in, in the knee and people think, okay, just lifting, this is weights, 
right? But just the really has a lot to do with uplifting who you are as an individual, uplifting your spirits, you know, uplifting your confidence into saying, hey, I am, I'm here today, and this is the way I want to be in the now or long, longer future, right? So it's, it's, a, it's, it's an environment where you could become a greater person in and of yourself and you build confidence to achieving these goals, not probably not in an area that you particularly focused on, mm-hmm. but it just shows you that, hey, you are greater than you think of yourself to be, you know? And I found that when I use those two tactics initially with clients, those clients last longer as opposed to those who I have not went through that system with. And that's something new that I've started. Okay. Okay. But I mean, also, how do you deal with those misconceptions that they feel like? <laughs> like when they see it mm-hmm. online all the time, mm-hmm. they see this guy getting ripped. Yeah. They see like, oh, I can get abs in two weeks. Or like certain clients, like they might be like a certain weight. They feel like they struggle in certain areas. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. They might never get to what they see online uh-huh. or like whatever else. And they might, and some that overdo it in the gym as well. Like uh-huh. who don't do it the right way or whatever. How do you... How do you... That, that's definitely a very, very good question. You know, just just of, just of late, I've gotten insight on aspects of fitness that I probably probably wasn't that exposed to, you know, in, in the sense that, you know, from a general basis, when I have clients, male and females, that you know, would ask me questions like, you know, I see these programs online that are 12-step 12, 12 week, 12 program where you could, you could come from this point to this point, and every week you lo- lose a, a certain amount of weight, and, you know, and what do you think about these things, you know? What, what do you think the, the, the chances are of me being that person that does this? For starters, I, I always tell people, your number one step to failing is comparing yourself to someone else, yeah. you know? <laughs> everyone is, is, is exposed to a different lifestyle and different opportunities, and everyone has a different threshold of what they have going on either for them or against them. So your number, your first step of failing is trying to compare yourself to someone else. That's number one. Your second step is you don't know fully what anyone else is doing. You know, we we like to think that the people who are exposing us to these 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 this realistic or unrealistic ideas are things that we can you can attain. But I found a lot recently that a lot of the people that that even myself look up to and say, hey, this is someone I'm aiming to be like. These people are on so many different performance Fox. enhancements Fox. and steroids. <laughs> yeah. And like it forces you to mentally put this strain on yourself and say, hey, why am I not being able to see the progress that they're seeing in this span of time? I remember when he was at he was squatting a certain amount of weight or he was deadlifting a certain amount of weight. Mm-hmm. And why is it that he could see so much progress in such a short span of time? And I can't. When for me in particular as well, I am sure I can speak for you guys, we're basically not natural for the most part. Yeah. You know, we try to eat a balanced diet as best we could. Mm-hmm. We get our protein intake in here and there. We, we get our multivitamins and that's pretty much it. You yeah. compare yourself to people all over the world who have exposed us to so many different avenues and these guys, are, are these ladies are on so many, they're, they're juiced right up. Yep. You can't compare yourself. Not to mention, for those that may not be juiced up, they probably have a personal shelf. Mm-hmm. They probably have different... Um, companies that they that they go to for liposuction, you know, so they're getting fat reductions. You yeah. can't compare yourself to people like this, you know. Exactly. When they have the assets to spend where you don't, you will always feel see yourself to a disadvantage, you know. Mm. So I often tell people, listen, look at what you have. Re- realistically, you put yourself in a frame of mind where you know your body, and you just try to do the best you can with the assets that you have, you know. And most importantly, listen, most of what you see online is a fad. It's a fad. It's not even real. You know, these people, first off, you got Photoshop. <laughs> and I, I already mentioned the steroids aspect of, of, of things. That's, that's becoming so popular now. Almost every action star, yeah. movie star, you know, singers, they are all in some, some measure. If TRX is an example of a steroid that people use, you know, so you really got to put, put things in perspective when it comes to where you want to be and how you're going to achieve your goal, mm-hmm. you know. All right. So that actually that actually springboards into into my question, right? I don't uh-huh. know. It, it's a personal question, but I feel like it 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 tailors to a lot of people. Um, you mentioned diet. You mentioned mm-hmm. multivitamins, um, meal prep. Okay, that's something I can say that I personally struggle with. Mm-hmm. And just knowing the amount of, I know you have apps that that can track it, mm-hmm. but are you your own nutritionist? Do you know how what your <clears throat> body needs and do you go out and prepare your own meals or do you go and say, hey, um, 
um, let me go to YouTube. Mm-hmm. I don't know what I want, but this will um, kind of help me get what I want and whatnot. Like, I know I struggle with meal prep. Mm-hmm. All right. So there are, there are a lot of different avenues when it comes to the meal prep concept. Mm-hmm. When I initially started my personal training, I worked along with with some people who are qualified and up degrees in nutrition. Mm-hmm. So when it, when it comes to those kind of stuff, I got a lot of insight from those those individuals, and they helped me along the way and help help me prepare the various meal plans that I already have that I follow even to this day. You know, I'm currently being in the process of being certified as a nutritionist. Mm-hmm. So that's something I want to add into my my mantle of things that I'm able in because. Really and truly, there I like to tell people there's not one particular meal plan that suits everyone's need. That's you know? true. That's I can't true. give you a meal plan and, and work for Macario and then it also work for you. You know, meal plans are designed based on body types and where you are in life. And age has a lot to play with it. Sex has a lot to play with it. You know, and also the lifestyle you have has, has a lot to play with it as well. Mm-hmm. You know, because everything is based off of when you wake up, what you do throughout the day. You know, when you go to sleep, mm-hmm. you know, and how strenuous or, or not strenuous your, your job or whatever you do throughout the day is. You know, these things play a factor. Another another aspect you mentioned was also, okay, you said you struggle with the meal plans. What aspect do you struggle with? Do you struggle with prepping them or do you struggle with having the meals themselves? Prepping them and then, like, con- like staying sticking with it. it. Yeah. yeah, sticking to it. So, like, if I don't prepare something, mm-hmm. then I know that, hey, okay, I work on a construction site, right? I work at, okay. at Albany, so okay. they have vendors out there. Okay. And when you that deep on God's back, ain't yeah. nothing around there. So it's either take um, whatever the vendors yeah. give you, which is um, <clears throat> sometimes it's fried food, sometimes it's all kind of this, all kind of that, or it's just wait until you have another um, another uh, restaurant or something to just go to. And ain't too many. Um, um, Good restaurants. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I definitely understand, you know. So from that perspective, for one, preparing in advance is a great tool and a great help, you know. Now, your situation is a little, it's a little more, you know, out there, so I'll get to that separately. But as it relates to the everyday person has a nine-to-five job, you know, preparing your meals ahead of time is a, is a key component in being successful with meal prepping. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, and I tell my clients this all the time, one of the biggest things people f- struggle with is the fact that, they wait until they're hungry to eat. Oh, yeah, that's not like me. You know, that's the number one issue right there. You, oh, yeah, and then yeah, you, you, you look at our environment as it is today. You're surrounded by people who don't have the same goals as you. Yeah. You know, so they're not concerned about you and your meal plan. And then you're also surrounded by companies with individuals. For example, you got Wendy's, you got McDonald's. These people don't care <laughs> left, right, or right about you and, 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 and your meal plans. They're interested in, in making their money. You know, so for you, you need to make sure that one, you have a meal that's in, in your vicinity. Mm-hmm. So you prepare it ahead of time. You put it in the work uh, fridge or maybe you need to put it in the Tupperware container that, that, that's meant to keep heat yeah. so that it can preserve it until lunchtime. And that's what you do so that anytime you, as soon as you're hungry and you're ready to eat, you can just turn around and while they're going to Wendy's or they're going wherever they're going to Bamboo Shack, you got yours right there. You know, that's the first line of the fence when it comes to these things. Now, in your, in your particular situation, what I would do if I work in, a, in that same environment is I would make sure that my size is taken care of immediately. So things that you can handle, I'll probably do the, the broccoli and the cauliflower, yeah. rice, ahead of time because those things can sustain themselves throughout the day. Yeah, yeah, you're you know, right. And once you put it in a, in a container that could keep the same temperature, they'll be good throughout the day. Now, something like meats, you, you can't go too far off when it comes to meats. I'm sure they have something probably like baked chicken or something of that nature. So that's not terrible mm-hmm. to have, have two today for lunch and then you also want to wage these things in comparison to when you actually work out are you someone that works out in the morning or are you someone that works out in the evening i always tell clients if you're working out before six or seven a.m in the morning you probably don't need breakfast you know because mm-hmm. whatever you put toward that night is going to sustain you through that, that, through, through that, through that, that time duration in the morning now in the morning you probably only need probably if you, if you need something a granola bar you know, mm-hmm. probably a quick protein shake, but nothing too crazy because the reality is it's too early to have something that heavy anyway. Yeah, I only get now, the evenings. <laughs> now, if you're someone that works out in the evening, your lunch needs to be the center of, of all your meals. You need to make sure that you have starch, absolutely have starch before that workout. If you're someone like me that does heavy heavyweight lifting, you mm-hmm. need starch. You know, like we often tell, I know the keto diet is a very, very popular diet right now. A lot of people, they're jumping on this diet. I, I was telling a lot of my clients, you know, while I see where it could be beneficial, mm-hmm. for the everyday person, especially if you're a weightlifter, that's terrible for you. 
That's terrible. You find yourself now pass out in the gym oh, because geez. carbs are literally energy. You need energy. You they can't w- get around it. They want yeah. the abs, man. You need, exa- yeah. You you want abs. <laughs> you want die on the process to get there. You know, abs is something. You, it's it's a reward of discipline. Yeah. Discipline is something that happens over time. You know, like abs not a, like a seven a, a seven seven week situation or a two week and you just kind of get like that. No, no, abs is a result of constantly being on task Lifestyle. with your, your diet throughout a certain period of time and then the exposure begins to happen but i even tell people you know the five percent body uh image that a lot of people see mm-hmm. in, in these magazines and on yeah. tv that's not realistic you know if you ask yourself because for me fitness and appearance they go hand in hand but health trumps them all yeah of course you know it trumps them all you look at any any, any individual that gets sick what's the first thing that happens to people when they get sick yes well they start to lose weight. Yeah, they get small. Right? They start to lose weight. So yeah. there is a percentage of, of weight that you need to have as a regular, healthy, exactly. functioning indiv- yeah. individual. When you start getting into those those single digits, you know, you put yourself more at risk. You get something like the flu, you more at risk. And it really comes down to how, how strong your defense is in terms of your body. You know, because something like cancer, that coming for your weight instantly. Yeah, yeah. So if you're already small, your time, your time limit is, is very short. You know, so these are things we need to factor in when it comes to, okay, how do I want to look? What's going to be my 24-7 look? For me, my chop down phase is really summer. That's the point when I'm trying to say, I'm trying to be as nice as possible. That's that's when your shirt's off. (laughs) But besides summer, you really should be at a nice, comfortable, not not fat or chubby, but at a a reasonable, relatable weight where you could function and have a, a healthy lifestyle. I agree, I agree. So I guess... Because I see you so focused and, you know, I just wanted to know, like, mm-hmm. is there someone in your family who inspired you, friends, anyone mm-hmm. who just got you on this path? Mm-hmm. I know it was mostly within yourself, mm-hmm. but is there someone who gave you, like, guidelines, notes, tips, anything to get you where you are right now? No, it's, it's a couple of motivating tools. For one, the first thing, and I guess, I guess the most important one for me is failure, you know? Mm. Philly is one of those taboo topics people don't like to talk about. It's a personal one, yeah. you know, but Philly is really the biggest proponent of what helped me to push and strive to continue to stay focused in, in what I, in the journey I'm on now and hoping that I never backtrack, you know. Seeing yourself go through this process of starting your fitness journey and then stopping and starting again and mm-hmm. just kind of find yourself daydreaming about where you could have been and this whole aspect of if I did and if I didn't. You know, that was the biggest proponent for me as to why I continue to stay motivated and why I stay on the needle because I know that there are people out there who are still haven't reached. I know that there are people out there who are hoping and praying that they could get in contact with someone who could help them. You know, someone honest, someone true, someone they could depend on, not only for a seasonal experience. I've had clients tell me, you know, I had a trainer for one particular point in time, and now the trainer, they venture off into something else without any real warning. You know, people just kind of end this thing that's just true. for a fight, that's true. That's true. just like most things in our country. You know, at one point in time, everybody was a DJ. Yeah, yeah. At one point in time, <laughs> everybody was a, was a photographer. <laughs> you know, like we kind of just go on with, with the speeds because we like the energy that people portray in these different fields. And I tell people, listen, Anything could be interesting and exciting if you are interested and exciting and if you're really someone who's driven about it. No, you got to be driven. Mm-hmm. You know, the second, but not, definitely not less important than the first, is that my clients depend on me. I can't take my foot off the gas pedal because every day that I post, they're looking for that motivation. And yep. outside of my clients, the everyday person depends on me. You know, they need to know that, hey, he's still on it. He's still putting up with this stuff, so I got to put up with this. This is a bottle. Fitness isn't a... A, a, a thing that has an expiry date you got to do this every day as, yep. it's, it's like as long as you live you got to find a way to stay healthy and that's really your battle staying healthy and what i like about squatoba because i know you brought a topic up quite mm-hmm. a while ago mm-hmm. squatoba it, it, it presents itself as a community you know it's almost like an entry point for people who need a way in or an incentive to get started to say hey this is the time when me and the girls, me and the boys could kind of get in the gym and start, start our process. Yeah. Because everyone is literally doing the same program and it's based off percentages. So the, the weight means absolutely nothing to this. It's all based off percentages. So you get the same type of intensity based off of where you're at and your fitness level. I agree. So that's why I kind of like about weightlifting too. Because at the same time, you can't throw money at it. No. You can't be that nice or bad person. You could be in prison. You do. You could weightlift. Yep. You could do anything like at this point. But at, at the end of the day, you got to be the one pushing the bar. Use the one under the bar. It don't matter who else there, whatever. And you got to do it every day. The bar ain't going to be like 
Oh, you left me yesterday. You got to do it again today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't be like, oh, just because you do that, you get a free pass. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I I impressed with you, especially because I used to see you in the gym. And it's mm-hmm. like, okay, he left that. Then he put more weight on it. And I'm like, he would have left that. Them, <laughs> wait, them, them better boy days. Yeah, <laughs> but it's like, uh, it was serious. So, I also want to know, like, because how you have your dream mm-hmm. and you have it to where... You make money from it. Most mm-hmm. people don't have that opportunity. How mm-hmm. do you balance that when it comes to your family, relationships, friends, and all that? Because mm-hmm. other people, when they see that, they also be like, okay, when we going to spend time, whatever, whatever, because you take <laughs> it away. You focus on your dream, but mm-hmm. they're also like, we ain't going to spend no time together. So no, how do you not. balance the two? You know, that's, that's one of the sad things about, about, that, about this whole experience is that fitness is one of those... I wouldn't say occupation. I'd say one of those careers, lives, or lifestyle choices. Whereas it kind of puts a fence or a wedge between you and the everyday life of every individual. You know, like for instance, the typical person that has a nine to five or has a career, or has a job, they spend their Fridays. Fridays is, is that's happy hour. We go into the bar. We gonna mm-hmm. get some drink. Or we we hanging out. We kick, it's a kickback day. You know, and because of what fitness is and what it represents, I'm not afforded that liberty. You yeah. know, to just kick up number 10 like Monday to Thursday didn't happen and Friday could just be one of those days because if I do that I'll pay for that the next day yeah. you know so how you balance it it's a, it's a measure of discipline and then those those loved ones around you just have to simply understand that hey you are available you can you, you can be made to be you know around and in touch it's just that certain things you just you just can't be heavily involved in yeah. you know it doesn't mean that oh I can't drink or I can't eat certain things it just means that I have a stricter limit when it comes to my engagement with certain things. No. You know, I can't be out there pretending as if this one, this one, this one can't play a major setback for me in the future mm. or lay down down the line. So it really just comes down to discipline. You know, just like with anything else, you know, it comes down to discipline, like with anything else. And um, as it relates to being able to do something that I enjoy and be profitable with it, I I truly believe that you can make money from doing anything. If you could, if you could establish a, net, a niche where people are able to see, hey, this has value behind it. Mm-hmm. You can make money from it. Yeah. You know, it just starts from from, from one. I know it's, it's a little cliche. People say it all the time. Believe it in yourself. But really, it truly starts in you got to sell the dream. You know, this dream could be something you sleep on every 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 night before you go to bed. Mm-hmm. But you got to believe in the dream. And you got to start the process. You know, before we, we turn on the camera, you was telling me about how you guys started the podcast and you got to start from something yeah. and, and be able to relate and resonate where you guys started from a point and I also had to start from a point with that crate. The reality is I had to see myself past the crate. I showed yep. people was laughing at me when I was walking around with a crate with some with some jump rope and I said, this big guy, be serious. You know, but the reality is my only thing I was focused on was, hey, this little style of park here can get someone out their house who probably was sitting in there contemplating the pre- in a depression state, contemplating whatever there is that would that, that mm-hmm. have them in a dumper, you know? And so the reality is me knowing that this helping someone else along with helping myself because when you assist someone, it makes you feel good as well. That energy is transferable, you know? So it sets the tone for them. It sets the tone for me. And that continues, continues to fuel me to continue to be able to do this. Okay. That's that's powerful. That's powerful. That my whole question is going on my head just now. <laughs> <laughs> um, Get it. Where do you see yourself um, going from here? Going from the current your current point now. Mm. How do you see yourself improving? Yeah, well, for where I'm at now, there are, there are various areas of improving. Where where I see myself in in a, in a short run is, I want to start hosting short-term classes for those individuals who don't particularly need a trainer, mm-hmm. but they may just need like a starter pack on how to go about getting started. You know, some people, they might not, either not, not be able to afford a trainer, they might not have the time for it, or their time span in terms of the how their working day is, and not be able to meet certain time criteria, so not only with me as a trainer, but any trainer. Mm-hmm. You know, so some people you know, they might just need a quick I- impromptu sessions of how, how to do these, these, these various exercises, you know, how to do a proper squat. How to do a proper deadlift? How to do a proper push-up? You know how to conduct yourself in a in, a, in an environment where you you might be limited. You mm-hmm. know, let's say you live in, in a condominium complex where they just have a basic gym, and you don't have all these things at, at your disposal. You might just need to understand how can I make the best out of what I have. So I'm interested in doing pockets like that. You know, 
And then there's there's some other other bigger dreams I'm looking at. I can't really expose those that's, things. You know, that's 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 you know, so There is a bigger vision from here. You know, my hope, and I'm sure the hope is of more, many trainers as well, is that we continue to inspire our individuals in this country to continue to work out. You know, because we live in a country where obesity, I think, is about 67. Yeah. You that's know, that, that that's very it's very high. You know, it just shows that you know we have a lot of work to do. You know, and we need to start to switch the the importance or Put on a, put a more keen eye on what it is and health means to us. You know, health does it doesn't have a, a specific image. Mm. You know, I think people see health as okay, maybe it's a slim girl or a slim guy that you see on the street, but that really has little to do with health. Yeah. You know, now mind you, there are extremities on both ends that could probably easily identify this person may be unhealthy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but there, there, there could, there can definitely be an unhealthy physique or a healthy sure. image in the middle as well yeah you know and especially when it comes to you're gonna speak more on, on man for a second us as man you know one of the first things that we need to take as a step to well is get get checkups more often we don't we don't get checkups you know we just we just have this notion of hey if i feel good i guess i good i, I guess i good <laughs> and, and tell something wrong and then now is this big panic and we don't talk about anything <laughs> to each other so no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, so you know, like yeah so like even with that, like, because you know men, we don't talk about stuff. Like, if they in the gym, or they in your gym, yeah, and they doing yeah. something, or you could, or you could see that something wrong. What do Definitely. You do? Like, you just address that, or now, you... it's very difficult to try. To, I, I, I guess in the, initially it was very difficult to kind of find a way on how I would start that conversation. Yeah, you know, and. It, it's difficult on both ends, you know. It's difficult to talk about well, women with certain things, and it's difficult to talk about men with certain things. Mm-hmm. And I think it really comes down to meeting people where they are, mm-hmm. you know, understanding that individual over time of working you know, with working with anybody. You understand the temperaments of that person. You know how to approach them. So I approach you from the level where you're at. I try to speak to you in a way where you understand that hey, this is almost like a bro tip or a sis tip, you know. I'm trying to put you on one. You know, give you game. So when they when people feel as though you you get you give them game rather than you almost you know discipl- disciplining them or trying to speak down on them, uh, maybe in a condescending way, then they start to realize, okay, I like this 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 aspect. You know, mm-hmm. so most people don't see me as oh this just the, the regular guy give me this advice. They see it as okay, this dude know exactly how to get me where I trying to get and I trying to get these tips. So it's almost like a you know a reward system. I can let you know exactly where you're getting from. And I speak from a point of, I might highlight some things you need to work on while also highlighting some things that you're doing excellent, you know? So that it's a balancing act. It yeah. doesn't come off as just harsh criticism. You understand that, hey, I'm looking at both sides of the fence. I see the positive you got going on. I, I listen, let's, this, is, this is a little something you got to work on. You ain't far off, you know? You almost there, yeah. you know? And that works better, I realize, rather than just speaking on what I, I noticed in an instance. Exactly. You know, because now... That advice is more palatable, you know, and people can digest it better. Yeah, you know, you, yeah, you talking about the positive and negative, so yeah. it's more genuine and in a way. So yeah, um, so also with that, Kadero talk about playing football, doing mm-hmm. specific workouts for that, and so you have anybody who like approaches you about specific sports workouts? Yes, you have yes, like. Yeah. Because in the States, they have children, they on a meal plan, they doing workouts from mm-hmm. three years old to get to where they need to be on a world scale. Mm-hmm. So how do you feel about doing that with the kids coming up and with the people now who approach you about sports workouts? Mm. Well, I don't, I don't specialize in training kids, mm-hmm. but, I, but I am able to, to some degree, to train kids. But it's not something I would claim as a title. Okay. All right? Mainly because... Training kids, I feel like it is a specialty skill where you need to understand that at a certain at certain ages, especially at adolescent to growing. teenage, there are certain things that kids are not able or should not be doing because it could one stunt their growth mm-hmm. and stunt the various hormones in, in the body. And just simply because I don't specialize in that, I wouldn't even take on that mantle. Okay, that right. Makes sense. Now, as it comes to sports, sports is a little bit different. Now, if that person is is an adult, I would know how to train you based off of what your goals are like i like we mentioned earlier you're talking about football and then i mentioned track and field you know it t- depends on what your position is mm-hmm. and what objective you're trying to reach now some people when they come to me about sports stuff they already come with just saying hey i'm weak in a particular area i'm looking to strengthen this particular area mm-hmm. now me knowing what that is i would gauge you and try to help you improve in that area that you have a weakness in so that'll be able to help you better in your sport 
you know where this comes into into play a lot rather than trying to do it on your own is because you might either go too hard into it and can risk injury because when you when you work your body from different realms especially when it comes to weightlifting and then going so intense in a particular sport exactly. you can risk injury yeah. so you need to understand what's the what's the recuperating time on whatever exercise it is that you that you've done you know and that that's what really helps people as it relates to training someone that does sports okay you know understanding yeah. that niche and it is a task because what it does for me is that different sports require different things so i almost have to go back to the drawing board and try to understand how your sport works you know i can't mm -hmm. take on the assumption that I, I i already get it yeah i gotta go and study this now so if someone is a volleyball player i gotta study what the fundamentals are and this requires some homework for me just to make sure that i can give you the best training experience that'll help you along the lines of what you're interested in doing makes sense you know because um to go back on that yeah mm -hmm. i i was i had that experience so mm -hmm. i was working out and i just felt like the workouts that i was doing wasn't helping me towards mm -hmm. football so it was so my mind kind of got out of it and from there i had to rebuild myself go back in the gym and go back to all right so for football i need explosion i need strength i need power and i need um plyo Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, let me go back and let me work on those things. So I, I, and trust me, I understand and I get that. I like that. I like that you do your research mm -hmm. to go back to saying what the sport need, what the sport uses, mm -hmm. and how um, best to do that. So I commend you for that. Not, I don't think a lot of people do that. Um, a lot of people oh, understand. Do yeah, it. a lot of people do it from their um, point of view. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have um, track coaches. I mean, track track kind of um, helps everything, but you have um, former track um, um, stars who are trainers mm -hmm. trying to do just track. Bas mm -hmm. No, trying to do basketball, trying to do like sports uh -huh. that that don't that they aren't familiar with, trying to relate it to what they were doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. What I think happen What I think happens in that particular, in that particular instance is that we have this thing where we feel as though we have a perfectionism mindset, but not in, not in a sense where we want to be the best or do the best work. We have a perfectionist mindset in the sense that we think that whatever we know is enough. We're good at it, we're good at it or we have been good at a particular sport, so we're just going to have that same energy in almost like an arrogant standpoint that, hey, because I was a good track athlete or I was a good swimmer or I was a good tennis player, that just is going to just tumble into me being a good whatever it is because yeah. I was good in this particular discipline. I was just speaking to a new client today and we kind of just pressed on you know, that the concept of I could be in shape as a weightlifter and be completely out of shape as a football player. Yeah, that's true. Every discipline has its own respect and you must give it that, you know? To have the, the mindset that I could just be good at this because I'm strong in the gym. Like I was, tell, like I was telling the, the young lady today, I may be able to lift six or 700 pounds in this gym, but have difficulty with lifting a coach. A coach, you know, just because that coach is in balance. No, yeah, yeah. You know, right. that's not a balanced <laughs> coach. You know, and the coach might only be 200 pounds or less, yep. but that weight on my shoulders, that's, that's equal out. You know, that's, that's a scientifically measured weight. Perfect. That has nothing to do with a coach. You know, so people be like, oh, you have nice strapping on. I'm man. sure you can lift this. And I'm like, no, I can't. I need to I wouldn't compare myself to, to a guy that works on, on, on the boat or marine captain either. Yeah. You know, what those guys do can't be compared to a contractor because those professions, have their, they, they have their own discipline, their own respect that comes along with them. And so like with anything else, I think it's extremely important that you have to get that research on what that area is. You cannot take it upon yourself to think that, hey, you just could go along and just do it because you're good at this one thing. Mm -mm. You know, everything has its own respect. And, you know, it's interesting that you said that, you know, because I have also noticed that. And I think there's a few things I tell new clients. You know, I said, if you ever meet a person or a trainer that could tell you they could, you could lose an X amount of money at a certain time, initially without even knowing you, just run. Run. <laughs> yeah, that's run. Powerful. Run. Because I often have clients ask me all the time, so how long do you think it's going to take me to lose this 30 pounds? I don't know you. I'm going to tell you, listen, I don't have a, have a, have a clue, exactly. the slightest clue, exactly. and how long. Because I don't know anything about you at all, Genetics. besides the name you just, you just gave me today. I don't know your work ethic. I don't exactly. know your metabolism. I don't yeah. know the makeup of your body. I can't give you any clue at all. And I don't even know how consistent you're going to be. 
Mm-hmm. You know, so really and truly, that's not something I'm even able to give you any inkling on until about two months in, where I see you work on a consistent basis to say, okay, this is this type of uh, of client who's going to be giving me this these type of I guess work ethic, and this is how closely they follow their their meal plan because I'm not watching you when, you, when you're eating, mm-hmm. so I can't tell you what it is you're eating all day. I have no clue, you know. So yeah. that's something that's entirely on you. I have you for an hour out of 20, 24 hours every day. And then the other three days you on your own, yep. you know. So my part is really minor as compared to what I'm asking of you, you know. And and, and like about anything else, it's what you do behind the scenes that's most important. Not what you do when the camera's watching. Very true. Yeah, stay watching. <laughs> um, you got anything else? Um, not yet. I was I looking at Kadim. I think Kadim got plenty of questions. No, no, the only question I had was um, I knew you mentioned about um, using the negative aspects as well as like the positive aspects. How long did it take you to potentially intertwine both of those um, perspectives to get, I guess, a more favorable client from that perspective? Because like, like you said, <laughs> if you go all negative, you know, yeah, you can it's definitely. not good as well. So. No. Well, I, a, long, a long road of L's. Yeah. Take an L's, you know, watch some people like a revolving door. They come and in because of the hype, and they leave him because, you know, yeah, I was uh, once known as a trainer who was just like, this dude is like a psychopath, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you come through these gates, like, I almost adopt this, this, this attitude of, I expect you to be a Marine, mm-hmm. you know, and that's what I thought was, was the way about it, you know? I knew, I knew it worked, but it, 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 was a grave, it was a grave mistake for me to think that because not everybody's gonna, not everybody's gonna, everybody's gonna respond well to that type mm-hmm. of training style. You know, something I also started to ask, ask people is, hey, what type of training style do you think is best compatible with you? You know, some people need that drill sergeant. Some people need more of a motivator. Some people, they kind of have this all figured out. They just need you to just tell them what to do. You know, they, they got it on their own. You know, so you need to know your client. And that, that's something that I think really and truly only, only happens over experience. You're going to have to take your L's. And that's for anything, even outside of training itself. You got to take those L's. And the important part, because I posted this probably a couple of days ago, I tell people it's not, the, it's not the L's you take that determine or define you. Is what you do after you take L. Yeah. You know, are you gonna stay down? Are you gonna learn from it? Now, if you keep taking the CML, I think you gotta ask yourself, what's wrong? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, ain't nothing wrong with losing, but losing the same way? Something yeah. wrong with that, yeah, bro. Something wrong, something wrong with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's, all I, that's all I had, really. That's all you got, you sure? Yeah, man. It was a, it was a good interview, man. It was a good interview. I, was, I came late, but, you know. <laughs> okay, then. All right. Anything you want to say to the people before we wrap? Uh, I guess I could talk a little bit about just being encouraged, you know? Yeah. Okay. I, I think it's very important for individuals to understand and realize that wherever environment you're in, you know, some people are still off of school. Some people, you know, they're living abroad now. Some people, they go to our, one of our public gyms or they may have a set up at home. I think it's important to realize, listen, wherever you're at, just appreciate the growth and the pro- process and the progress of where you're at. You know, comparing yourself to anyone else is one of the biggest mistakes that I have also made. I know a lot of people have also made. Too, you know, man. as I mentioned <laughs> earlier, you know, I cause used to compare myself to a lot of these guys online, you know, between Instagram and YouTube and saying, you know, hey, how, why is it that I'm at this every day yeah. and I can't seem to match up to what this person is doing and they're doing the same type of intensity that I'm doing. You know, and it's really and truly because you don't know what else that they got going on besides besides that, you know. And for a lot of us, we got our jobs we're doing as well. Some people do this full time. Yeah. You know, they working out every single day. This this is literally their their, their religion. Yeah. You know, so you you can't compare yourself to, to things like that. And then there are also things that help people have different capabilities that have, than you that you would have. You know, so what I would leave with people is that you know, just be encouraged. Start where you at. You know, I see a lot of gents and, and ladies, they start their stuff at home. You know, they got a couple of dumbbells, got a jump rope. Listen, that's an excellent start. At the beginning of COVID, I can tell you, just less than two years ago, I started with, with, with the, the crate. Mm-hmm. Nothing was in the crate. You know, just some jump rope, medicine ball, simple stuff, and some cones. And I would jump rope every day. I said goes like 10,000. I do 10,000 jump rope every day. And that's all I had. So I used it and I abused it until I had to buy ropes. Just keep buying everything. Keep burning the ropes. So I guess keep buying more ropes. Until I got more things. So it's, it's, a, it's really a process. You start where you at. And you just set small goals for yourself. Okay, I, I start in the squats today. I'll start with just the bar. You know, I always tell my clients, when I started on bench press, I, I remember starting with just the bar. That's it. 
You know, that was the hum- the most humbling experience ever. God, being in being in the gym. <laughs> being oh, yeah, in the gym at 18. Down. You know, and I sit in there with my coach and he tell me to get on need the bar. And it's the first time I, I, I'm running through the process of how to do the bench press. And I guess I remember thinking to myself, how in the hell would I ever add weight to this bar? <laughs> this bar is too heavy <laughs> by itself. You know, I couldn't yeah. get over how excessively heavy I found this bar to be. Mm-hmm. I, I remember looking at the videos of people online doing three and four plates on the bar, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. this is not a goal that's realistic. <laughs> How would I ever get it? <laughs> I remember when I first reached the first plate, it took me months to get to that first plate. Yeah. You know what I mean? This, this trying and trying and trying. Try, no months, months off. No months <laughs> off. <laughs> to get to that first plate, man. And I'm feeling like, like I hear now, okay, so I'm happy about being here. But I don't see myself to to have nothing else after this. You know, like this, this is this is just becoming too much. You know, and maybe it's because remember we we spoke about I think you spoke about ego lifting, mm-hmm. right? You looking at other people in the gym, you seeing these other guys, they got the two plates on the bar. Yeah, you're saying, yeah, yeah. I'm just like him. <laughs> he's an, he's an, he's stronger than I am. He's why why can I why got two plates? What's going on? Exactly. You know, so I put the plates on. You know, and what it really is is that goes back to what I said just in the beginning of this. It's the process. You know, look at little increments. That's the reason why people really downplay the importance of those 2.5 plates and those five pound plates in the gym. Those are crucial. We don't need to count weights in the sense of 10 and 25 and 35 and 45. Start with the 2.5 pounds. Mm -hmm. You will add on, you know. A lot of times it's not that you're not getting stronger, you know. You just ego lifting, you're trying to jump the gun, you're trying to get too far, too fast. You know, if you had a plate, I started in the 2.5. Then the five, mm-hmm. then the ten, and before you know that, I was knocking on two plates though. Because the body is amazing. Y- thing you know, it's it. amazing. Your body adapts. You know, and a little, a little, a little bro tip on how, how muscles work. You burn muscles, you tear muscles, and then they repair themselves. Exactly. So the gym is only one third of what's important. You gotta work out, you gotta eat right, and you have to sleep. You have to sleep. That's crucial. If you're working out and you eating right, but you ain't sleeping. You will never have any real progress in the gym because what, what's happening is that you're tearing muscle fibers, but they're not repairing themselves. Yeah. So you're risking injury. You need to sleep. Most of your your your, your rehabilitation happens within your rest. Mm-hmm. So you need to sleep. You know. So that's those three components I want to leave with everyone: work out, eat well, and you must rest. And please don't compare yourself to anyone. Now, if you're seeking advice, ask for advice. You know, make sure the person yeah. you're speaking to is the one, the one exactly. you respect, you respect, and is reputable. Because they these really the individuals in the gym trying to give you advice. No, you know, no. don't go after the people in the mm. gym who just running to give you advice over there. Yeah. They're hidden motives. Look for someone who's professional, who you deem as a professional, and try to get that advice from that individual. Yes, sir. You know, and that's how that's how you get yourself on another level. All right. And like we said, we can leave his contact in the caption, so you know you could hit him up, hit him up with your questions, your and ask for your advice as well. But there you have it, folks. I mean, the man gave us a lot of insight on you. fitness. That's a lot. That was a lot. You ain't, hey, you ain't gonna get this from from any. You ain't gonna get this on YouTube. Well, you can get this from YouTube <laughs> because because it's on YouTube. But you can get this from any and everybody. Yeah. You can get this from any everybody. Um, I not I, I don't know. I don't remember. How we that was a this. mic drop, man. I don't remember. We close this. That was a wealth of information. That's all I have to say. Um, stay tuned. I don't know how our next guest is gonna top this one, but stay tuned for the next. Um, sit down at the sandbar. We, you know, we can hit you up. We give you some more insight. Like, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Welcome thanks, back. Thanks for spending your time. Me. Welcome back anytime, man. You want to reach out to me? The, the company name is Just Liftin. You can find me on Instagram at underscore J U S T L I F T N. Just Liftin. Just reach out to me from there. And any other further contacts, you can you can send me a, a DM or in, inbox from there, and I'll be able to readily respond to your message or your question or whatever it is. There you have it. There you have it. We may see Kadeem again in the future. We don't know. <laughs> but in that, it's been Aganda. Stay tuned. See y'all later, folks.